Thank, thank you. I, I probably need it later more than, more than now, though, I think. So, so um, thank you so much for the invitation to speak today. This is actually a pretty fun topic, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Um, I have no relevant disclosures for this talk. The green button. Um, although I do have a Twitter account, and I do have a Facebook account, and I do blog for occasion, um, those are the only real disclosures. So who has used YouTube in the room for a surgery-related function for work? Okay, good. How about Facebook? Good. LinkedIn? Professional networking, I hope so. Um, Twitter? There's a lot about the meeting, right? You've probably also seen Sage's TV, I hope so. I hope this stuff actually circulates there. So if you haven't, hopefully that will be soon. And then blogs. These are all different forms of social media, and I think they're all essentially very effective, and they have a great place in our practices. What do you use social media for? Name recognition. Who are you? What do you do? Marketing of your practice. Maybe even academic credibility. Networking. Good way to meet colleagues. Actually branch out outside of your practice. Advice, if you have a question on a case. Education, go look up a video before you do a case of something new or different or something you haven't done in a while. Um, consensus, it's a great way to reach out and get other people's opinions and really actually start polling people. We were actually talking today when we were in the Sages board meeting of using social media to grade ourselves and our operative skills. I think this will be a great thing in the future. Uh, research, maybe you can actually go and find some colleagues who want to do a project with you. And it's a really great way for collaboration. So last year, Dr. Jacob, who is pretty arguably the expert in this area, actually gave a talk about social media at the last SAGES meeting. And you might notice who's sitting here interviewing him, um, will be actually coming up soon, is uh, Dr. Ed Felix. So I'll be just talking a little bit of him. Um, he described Facebook as addicting because of the quick response. So we'll talk a little bit more of the con argument as well with Dr. Felix. So what is the IHC? This is Dr. Jacobs' site. Um, these slides actually came from Dr. Jacobs. And essentially this started in 2012 as a great group and a great outreach to talk about hernia. Who in the room is part of the IHC? So probably most of us, right? This is a very, very popular and I think very productive forum. Um, it's a great way to look at preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative decision making. Look at outcomes that you have and want to share, good and bad, um, and really to optimize patient care. So I think it is effective for that. So looking at the IHC, it's got a large number of members, almost 2,000 members, and really, really is an active group. So let's look at the comments here. Over 2,000 comments per month, according to Dr. Jacob and really great growth over the time that we've had this program. What kind of things are discussed? So here's a case looking at kind of difficult things. What, what should I do? I haven't done this recently. Well, here, it's a great way to get opinions about difficult cases, is what Peter Bovey said. Here's another one. Somebody's just having a really bad day and wants to share that with somebody else. There's not somebody necessarily in their hospital, or maybe even in their practice, just want to say, this makes me cringe. God, what am I getting into? Um, here's somebody else asking for advice. I, I'm trying to come to my value-added committee, and I have to argue robotics. Can you give me data? What can I share? It's a great way to try to network, particularly for people out in a community practice or somebody who might be starting something novel by themselves. They can go find somebody else in real quick time response that can help them grow. So what else? I have a patient, big hematoma after a tar. Lots of comments and, and opinions came back pretty quickly in this group, matter of hours, right? But the other thing that happened after this group comment was that they actually came up with a research question and got a research group together to take it the next step. So here, let's sign up, let's get, let's get together, let's make a research collaborative. And that happened within hours of having a post and a question. And that's pretty amazing, the power that we can do with social media. In the old-fashioned way, we would have probably had this at the next stages meeting. We may have talked about it, may have had a beer and come up with a question, put it in for a research grant the next year, and be two years before we start the project. So this is really different with social media, and I think is amazing. So what else? 
I'm, I'm not, not the expert, expert on social, social media. media. I'm on social media, but I'm not on it every day, and I'm not on it every hour, and there are some people who are. So I figured I'd find out from the people who use it often what they suggested. So I actually posted on the IHC about this debate. So some of the people who frequent it comment, it's a great learning tool. I use it 24-7, real-time questions and perioperative management. Somebody else said it's great for rural surgeons. Here's another one. It, it really attaches real people to ideas, and then they become friends and colleagues. So it's a great way, really, to network. Look who else commented. So Ed Felix, don't help Aurora. So, so I love that. that. So, so it, it makes, makes it fun, fun and, and it makes it, for us, we've been battling before the battle even started, so it's been great. So what else? So social media platforms have linked minds across the nation, collaborating and breaking the traditional rules. And I think that's really true. This is pushing us to the next thing. We're innovators, right? This lets us innovate real time and get those ideas out there. Young, young surgeons, surgeons and new practices, practices they're, they're, they're getting, getting senior mentorship from other places, places new opinions, great, great way to connect back to other colleagues, colleagues. and, and I, I think can really be a good resource. resource. Ed Felix, you, you guys are killing me. me. I, I give up. up. So, so, so clearly, Ed's, Ed's not really con social media, or at least if he is, he's, he's really engaged with that, so I, I, I give him that. that. There's some other great ideas. David Earle thought it was a great thing for research ideas because as opposed to spending a long time doing a traditional research study, you can actually get ideas and opinions, and something may crash and burn before you spend a lot of venture capital. So Dr. Dickens suggested that Dr. Felix could have gone through a similar strategy that I did and used the traditional methods to get his answers too, but I don't think we would have had them this week. So, there you go. So, by Dr. Felix's response and Dr. Bittner's comment on it, I think we understand the immediacy and relevance of social media. So, so this is something else that came out here, that do the number of surgeons of the IHC and the sheer volume, these are actually outside groups saying that this is really what the future hernia surgery is. That these are the new ideas, these are the new collaborations, these, these are the exciting ideas being shared and grown and vetted before we have to do large, big studies. So what else is there? I talked about the IHC. There's actually a lot of other things as well. This is actually a SAGE's endorsed group for foregut surgery. Are you guys familiar with this group? If you aren't, I hope you go look it up. Andy Wright, who spoke earlier, actually leads this group, and he vets the opinions. And it's similar to the IHC, but it's for discussion on foregut issues. So this is a really similar kind of thing, same kind of questions. I'm, I'm looking, looking at a new mesh. mesh. Have, Have you guys, guys used it before? It's a lot better to get that opinion, I think, from another surgeon than from the sales rep who's bringing you the new piece of mesh. Getting a real opinion from somebody who's used it that's not getting paid by the company. So, so these are things that are effective use of social media. So Andy Wright also pointed out, and, and Andy's got one of the best Twitter accounts. If you've never seen his account or his feeds, they're, they're pretty amazing. Um, but he, he commented on something else that's out there, and this is the International General Surgery Journal Club that's actually doing a real-time social media journal club. So these are some of the cool things we can do in the future, and I think our younger surgeons are going to see these and really capitalize on these as resources for the future of surgery. So we talked about what these sites can do, and I think all the things that I talked about we can do, and definitely other people agree with me as well. Um, Thank, Thank you, Dr. Dr. Wilson. Um, but really, it's real-time feedback, videos, real cases. You can get crowdsourced feedback on your questions. That's immediate. You can talk about research, get fast accrual, and, and really get that data. So I think all these things are important and are, are real benefits to social media. There are downfalls to social media. Um, these things that you post may come back and haunt you at some point in the future. So I, I think we'll be hearing about those things from Dr. Felix and his own personal experiences. And then later, maybe we can go have a glass of wine. Thank you.